people uh, in Britain and in Ireland who make that so. And happy St Patrick's Day. Steve. Steve. Thank you very much, my film deputy speaker, Gore over my pocket. Thank you very much. I also wish to wish honourable and right honourable members and all of my constituents across Cope Bridge <laughs> Nation and Bell Sill a very happy St Patrick's Day. Madam Deputy Speaker, we all know that Ireland is Scotland's closest neighbour and relation, and our often shared heritage and our historical bond runs as deep today as the River Clyde and Liffey uh, combined. We in Scotland value immensely the relationship between our Irish brothers and sisters, and our bond remains ever strong. The histories of the people of Ireland and Scotland are closely intertwined with our stories of migration taking many forms in different times over the centuries. Whether Scottish or Irish, chances are we are all immigrants. Place names and family names and our traditions across both our lands are an ever-present reminder of our interlocked Gaelic past and, more importantly, our shared futures together. My own family surname comes from our Irish heritage and my roots can be traced back to County Donegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Itself an Irish county with its own unique story, being ge geographically in the north of Ireland but part of the 26 counties that make up the rest of the island. And today, my ties to Ireland allow me to visit frequently. And just last week, I was fortunate enough to be in the town of Drogheda in County Louth, Madam Deputy Speaker. The reason for that trip to was, to, was to partake in one of those old Scottish and Irish traditions, wetting of the baby's head, <laughs> as we welcomed Finn Martin Murphy into this world. Born of a Scottish mother and an Irish father, it's safe to say that the connections between our countries and our families are safe for at least another generation. Yeah. <laughs> While there, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I took the opportunity to visit the site of the Battle of Boyne in Drogheda, a truly historic place which can be appreciated regardless of faith, creed or political persuasion. The profound consequences of the battle reverber rever reverberate to this day in the toing and froing over the withdrawal agreement and, and the Northern Irish Protocol. But it is always worth remembering that there is far more that unites us than separates us. And I was also able to indulge in Ireland's greatest export, uh, some Guinness, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'd like to extend my gratitude to those kind persons of the St Lawrence Club at McHugh's for their warm hospitality. And as they say in Ireland, the crack was 90. <laughs> both Scotland and Ireland are nations who have stood strong both through glory and through tragedy. From the creation of St Columbus Monastery in the Isle of Iona, Iona the Irish saint also lends his name to my local parish and my constituency. To the tragedies of the Scottish Highland Clearances and in Gorta Moor, the Great Famine in Ireland, both events so, so many perish and thousands of Scots and Irish move between these lands. Millions of people worldwide today can trace their descendants back to these tough, resilient Irish and Scottish survivors. The 2011 census in Scotland revealed that almost 11,000 Irish citizens were living in Scotland. Coat Bridge, my own constituency, long renowned both in Scotland and Ireland for its Irish diaspora. By the same token, many of my country people live across the Irish Sea, 15,000 in the north of Ireland alone, based on that same census in 2011. A further 57,000 people recorded as speaking in Gaelga, and it is of no surprise that our relationship across the sea remains vibrant and is vitally important to Scottish and Irish alike. With the current census ongoing in Scotland and the ramifications of Brexit never far from the minds of Scots or the Irish, I am entirely confident that the number of Irish passports in Scotland, the passport holders, will have increased sharply <laughs> over the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Such drastic impacts on our identities and our outlooks, such as Brexit, will have a, prou a profound impact on the eventual make-up of these shared islands. Despite us no longer being a uh, sharing membership of the European Union, the strong and enduring foundation of the common travel area and the structures created by the Good Friday Agreement provide a stable foundation for the continued development of good relations between our peoples. Ireland has a long tradition of diaspora engagement around the world, and this was reinforced by their Department of Foreign Affairs appointing its First Minister for Diaspora Affairs in 2014. And of course, Scotland engages her global diaspora through Global Scot, a worldwide network of almost 800 entrepreneurial and inspirational business leaders and experts. The Scottish Government will continue this good work with Irish colleagues on common issues and shared goals, particularly in diaspora affairs, to assess where learns can be lessons can be drawn from Ireland's experience. 
There is also scope for increased exchange and partnerships between different diaspora organisations. And this is something I am really keen uh, and eager to encourage in the hope that it allows for greater support that we can provide to the Irish communities organisations across Scotland. A community that it cannot go unsaved has not always been fully uh, accepted into uh, Scottish society by all. But of course today is about celebration, the celebration of the Feast of St Patrick, when we are all a wee bit Irish today, aren't we? Together across this house we celebrate our shared heritage, our music, our traditions and our culture. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.